Uh, welcome to a day uh, filled with energy methods in engineering mechanics. So in the morning, um, I will discuss uh, what is the method of virtual work. It is a part of energy methods. And in the afternoon, we will discuss about uh, minimum potential energy theorem and how it is applied in engineering mechanics for finding out equilibrium of various systems and the corresponding stability of those systems. For example, in uh, in a few places that I know of, that these topics are not typically discussed. But there is a reason why I want to discuss this. So first of all, towards the end of this class, it will become very clear that principle of virtual work, that if you can get an understanding of how this principle is applied, then even when you go back to our equilibrium, 2D equilibrium we had done a couple of days ago, it will be apparent that a good hold or a good mastery over how to apply principle of virtual work will automatically give a good hold or good mastery or how to apply or how to solve problems in 2D equilibrium. Okay? You bear with me for some time. Okay? I am sure you will find it interesting if you have not done this before. And there will be a tutorial at around 11.30, the same time we had a tutorial yesterday. And if required, we can also let this session spill over in the afternoon uh, period when we will take the class. Okay? But you will see, okay, you will definitely appreciate by the end of this class, and that's what I hope to that how this simple idea okay, will let you understand that upon releasing some constraints, how does the remainder of the structure move? And from that, by looking at any problem, okay, you would immediately have an idea that what appropriate free body diagrams to draw, okay, what are the appropriate equations of equilibrium, okay, and so on. But first things first, what we will do is let us see how to use, what is this principle, how to use this principle, and in what problems or in what cases the application of this principle becomes really useful and makes the problem very straightforward as compared to uh, solving it by equilibrium methods. Okay? So with this brief preamble, let me discuss, okay, so we have discussed force till now. Shobhik had taught 3D equilibrium, trusses, v rate friction, uh, 2D equilibrium and so on. Okay? So we are going in a little bit of a different territory now. We spoke the language of force and here we will speak the language of energy or work. Now we all know that if there is a force if there is a particle A on which we apply force F, the force we all know is a vector in a particular direction, the force acts, then the work of the force F, okay, corresponding to a small displacement if the particle undergoes. It goes from A to A prime and in the meanwhile undergoing a displacement of dr bar vectorially, then the work done clearly is F dot dr. Okay, we have learned that since our high school or in scalar notation, F is equal to dS cos alpha, the angle between these two, straightforward. Okay? And special cases is that we know that when alpha is equal to 0, then work will be just F into dS, how much displacement, alpha is equal to pi, work done will be negative because the displacement is in the direction of uh, the force. Yeah. So if alpha is equal to pi, what does pi mean? That the force and displacements are exactly opposite to each other, the direction wise. So what we see is that, that the work done will be negative and simple case if the displacement is perpendicular to the force, then the work done we all know is zero. Okay, simple concept. Now coming little bit one step ahead, suppose if we have a couple acting on a rigid body. So that was a point which we discussed in the last slide. If we have an extended rigid body and we have a couple F and minus F acting on it, we want to find out what is the work done by the couple. So what we'll realize is that, that if Point A is where the force minus F act, point B is where the force F acts, and at point B, okay, suppose we give this entire rigid body a small infinitesimal rotation of d theta, okay, then we can immediately find out what is dr1, what is dr2, and just little bit of manipulation if you will do, you will realize that the total work done will be simply equal to fr, where r is the perpendicular distance between these two points and F times R is the couple or the torque or the moment, whatever the term you prefer, and work will be simply equal to M times d, d theta. So simply, if you have a point and a force acts on the point, we know that work done is equal to F times dS into cos alpha, alpha is the angle. In similar vein, if we have a rigid body, an extended rigid body, 
And if we apply a torque of m, then m times d theta is the work done, okay? These simple things we just have to remember and then we are going to apply these things when we use the principle of virtual work, okay? So far, so good. Now, suppose that a particle A is subjected to multiple forces, F1, F2, F3 and so on, and to which we apply a virtual displacement. Now, what is this thing about virtual displacement? Virtual displacement, the reason we use this uh, extra qualifier virtual is to emphasize that this is, for example, almost like a thought experiment. You have a particle subjected to many forces. It is not that the forces are giving the particle a displacement. They may or may not. But as far as our thought experiment goes, what we are doing is that, let us say that these forces are acting to which we imagine that suppose we move the particle or displace it by a certain amount delta r. So that's why we use this uh, a pre-qualifier small delta so as to say, okay, so as to distinguish dr, which is the actual displacement from the virtual displacement. So we give it a virtual displacement of delta r and ask ourselves that subject to those forces, what is the virtual work? Okay, again, virtual displacement pro producing virtual work. So what is the corresponding virtual work? And straightforward, like our logic just extending from whatever we have done in the previous slides, f1 dot dr, f2 dot dr plus f3 dot dr, which can be just written as f1 plus f2 plus f3 dot dr, which is nothing but resultant dot dr, simple logic, vector logic. So delta u or the virtual work which is done by all these forces on this particle when we provide it a displacement of small delta r will be given as resultant of this dot dr. Now the question we ask ourselves is this, suppose if all these forces, okay, f1, f2, f3, they are all concurrent forces in this case. And suppose they are all in equilibrium, which means that resultant R is, is equal to zero. What does that tell us about the work? Clearly, if R is zero, then the virtual work done is zero. So what we know one way is that, that if you take a particle, apply forces on it, such that all the forces are in equilibrium, in the sense that sum of all the forces is equal to zero, then the virtual work done on the particle for any virtual displacement is equal to zero. So there is one way result that we know. But let us think in the other way around. Suppose we have a particle on, we, on which we apply any number of forces. Now, if we provide any virtual displacement, any direction, and even with that, suppose we get that the virtual work for any virtual displacement is zero, then we can say that the sum of forces is also equal to zero. So it goes both ways that if the forces are in equilibrium, virtual work is zero. And if virtual work is zero for any virtual displacement, then the forces, the resultant should be zero. So what it means is that, that force balance and saying that virtual work is equal to zero for any arbitrary displacement are two equivalent principles. That the principle of virtual work, what it implies is the same thing which Newton's law imply, nothing less, nothing more. And with that, you have an alternative uh, formalism to discuss equilibrium. That either you say that Newton's law are true, all the forces are uh, zero when they act on a particle, it means that a particle is in equilibrium. Or you say that for any virtual displacement, if the virtual work is zero, then also you say that the body or the particle is in equilibrium. Now, like I'm not going to prove it here, but you can look it up in any textbook. If not, we can discuss after the class, okay? But suppose now this was a point. So we are okay with the principle of virtual work on a point. Are there any questions about that? So far, so good, okay, very easy. Now suppose we have an extended body, not a point. Then what the principle of virtual work says that if a rigid body is in equilibrium, the total virtual work of external forces acting on the body is zero for any virtual displacement of the body. So saying that force balance and moment balance, okay, implies that the rigid body is in equilibrium is equivalent to saying that if on a rigid body, I apply any combination of virtual displacement, and then if the virtual work turns out to be zero, this means that the rigid body is in equilibrium. Okay, simple principle of virtual work is what we have here. We go one step ahead. Again, this also we can easily show, but we are not going to do it here for the lack of time. If you have a system of rigid bodies which are connected by links, okay, and if we provide it virtual work such that it is consistent with the linkages, okay, that it's consistent that we don't break up the linkages or we don't disobey or we don't uh, disobey 
the uh, constraints provided by the linkages, then for any virtual displacement, if the entire set of rigid bodies is in equilibrium, uh, then the virtual work uh, which is provided by any set of virtual displacement is equal to zero. Okay? And this principle, be, uh, principle will become more clear as we proceed further and as we solve a few examples. So let us take a very, very simple example. A simple rigid body, okay, which is hinged or pinned at point O and it has a roller support okay, at the other point. Now suppose we want to find out that if on this rigid body we apply a force P, what is the reaction produced at this point? Simple question. We know that if we want to use the equilibrium approach, 2D equilibrium which we had discussed before, what we will do is we will take this free body out, we release this kinematic constraint because at point O, displacements in horizontal and vertical direction both are constrained. The releasing of this constraint will give rise to possibly two reactions, OY, OX. Since this is a roller, upon releasing this constraint, okay, this was already free, so no reaction, but a vertical constraint when it is removed, it may lead to a reaction R. And what we do is we take the moment about point A for this free body diagram and we can immediately find what is R. Now here, what we use is a very different approach. What we do is this, we release this constraint, okay, remove this kinematic constraint. So essentially what we have is that we have this triangle which is, which is hinged about point O. Now we all know that if we have a rigid body just pinned about one point, this is not a stable body, it's a mechanism. But what we are doing now is on this body, we apply a virtual displacement. Okay, we apply a virtual displacement, how? So that after providing the virtual displacement or virtual rotation, whatever you want to call it, the body in the final configuration of the body is in these dotted lines. Okay? It is not a real displacement. What we are just doing is this, that suppose I just release the constraint on the one side and apply a small rotation about point O, look at what is the resulting configuration. Now if I want to find out what is the virtual work done by all the forces, okay? what are the two forces now that can do work? The reactions here cannot do work, why? Because the point is stationary, there is no displacement. Point O, oh, so, sorry, sorry, this point, can do a work which is given by R times the vertical displacement here. Note that this is B, so we will see later that a vertical displacement will be simply B times delta theta when delta theta is small and it is in the upward direction. So the work done at point here will be equal to R times B delta theta. Let us look at the top point. When we provide this virtual displacement, this point will move sideways with a displacement of A times delta theta. Now this displacement is opposite to the direction of force. I should put a negative sign here, okay? My mistake. So this uh, displacement is opposite to the direction of force. So the work done, okay, will be negative. So minus P A delta theta is the virtual work done at this point. R B delta theta is the virtual work done at this point. And the principle of virtual work says that if the rigid body is in equilibrium, we provide it a virtual displacement, okay? Then if you sum up all the virtual work done by the forces acting on the body, then that will be equal to zero. We make it equal to zero and what do we get? We immediately see that R is equal to PA by B and that's exactly the same answer you would get, okay? If we use the equilibrium approach. So what we have shown here is that it's an alternate way of looking at the same problem. You may say that we are not gaining much. We write this equation, we also write another single equation for 2D equilibrium. So what's the big deal? The big deal is that we will see that there are certain classes of problems which can be solved really, really well by this. Second thing, okay, I will come to those points, is if we can understand how do bodies move, how, what are the mechanisms, okay, upon releasing some constraint, how does each component move relative to the other, then that will give us an intuition even for solving 2D equilibrium problems. Now suppose, I want to find out, I know R. Now I want to find out what is the vertical reaction at point O. What we'll do is this. We will release the vertical support here and give this entire body now a vertical virtual displacement. So what we will have that the force here times delta Y plus R times delta Y will be equal to zero. Then it immediately tells you that OY plus R is equal to zero, which is nothing but equilibrium in the Y direction. Is this point clear or should I write it down on the page? So let us take this 
rigid body here. This was point O. Let us say that this was point B. We found out that this was a reaction R acting at point B. And at point O, we can have two possible reactions because it's a pin support, OY, OX. This force is P. Now suppose to this rigid body, we give a virtual translation of delta Y. Then what does the principle of virtual work tell you? That given this virtual displacement, what is the overall virtual work? The overall virtual work now will be done by P delta Y are perpendicular to each other, no work. OX delta Y are perpendicular to each other, work done is zero. What is the virtual work done here? R times delta Y. Note that the direction of virtual displacement, okay, so how will this final figure look like? It will look like this. Upon giving the virtual displacement, this is how the body will look like. So these are the displacement, no work done at point P, no work done at point O due to force OX, and the work done at point B is equal to R times delta Y. Both are upwards, so positive work. What is the work done at O plus OY times delta Y? And principle of virtual work tells us that if this body is in equilibrium, that the sum of the virtual work done should be equal to zero. But since this is true for any arbitrary delta Y, this immediately implies that R plus OY is equal to zero. But what is this equilibrium equation? This equilibrium equation is nothing but equilibrium in the Y direction. Okay, so is this point clear? That applying the principle of virtual work by providing a virtual displacement in the Y direction is nothing but equivalent to force balance in the Y direction. Is this point clear? So we can do the same thing by applying a virtual displacement for this body in the X direction and the only component that does work is what? P times delta X plus OX times delta X equal to zero. So what do we see? That P delta X plus OX delta X is equal to zero. And this simply means that P plus OX equal to zero, but which is nothing but equilibrium equation in the X direction. So that's why we know that principle of virtual work and the moment balance and force balance are two equivalent things. We can use one way or the either, okay? And we will get the same answer. Only thing is that the philosophically they are drastically different and we will see that because they are philosophically drastically different, okay, principles of virtual work have a great value in solid mechanics, in structural mechanics, and in finite element method. Okay? We'll come, that to, come to that later. Okay? So let us come here. Now there is a terminology that we use while doing principle of virtual work. We say that forces that do the work, okay, as we saw previously, that in this case, R and P were the forces that did the virtual work. And those forces are called as active force. There are reactive and internal forces. Means for example, look at this structure. Okay? What we have here is that it's, we have, uh, uh, we really had here a, a vertical roller, which we are released now. Okay, vertical roller, uh, this is P, this is F. If we give it a virtual displacement, then the reactions here okay, will not do work. The reactions here will not do work. The internal linkages will not do work. Only work will be done by P and F, and those are called as the active forces. And the, work, and the reactions of the forces we don't do the work are called as reactive forces. Now virtual displacements are to be given carefully so that only the active forces, okay, uh, that only the active forces are only the forces that we know and the forces that we are interested in obtaining. Means for example, let us look at this uh, picture. Okay, let me go back to the paper mode again. Suppose take this rigid body. Suppose I, I give it a virtual displacement, which is a combination of rotation and translation in the y direction. Okay? Or suppose I give it uh, uh, something like this. Uh, let, let us move it upwards.
we give it a vertical a translation in the y direction as well as a small rotation. In that case, what will happen is that, that because there is a translation here, work will be done by OY. There will be no virtual work done by OX. Since this point moves upwards, work will be done by R also. And work will be done by P also. So OY, R, and P, all of them end up doing work. And because of that, what happens is that we get a coupled equation. okay? And we'll have P delta XP plus R delta Y plus uh, uh, delta Y, let me call this delta YB and OY delta Y simply, okay? Or delta YO is equal to zero. So in that case, what happens is that we will not get a clear cut answer to the problem that we desire. Why? Because we have exposed two unknown forces here. So the idea is that there is nothing wrong with doing like this, but what happens is that, that if you provide virtual displacements which are not judicious, then you will get some equations. It is like, for example, if you take moment for a free body diagram, suppose this is the free body diagram in 2D equilibrium. Somebody may say, why should not I take torque about this point? Of course you can do, there is nothing wrong with that. But what will happen? That this will also contribute, this will also contribute, this will also contribute. So we will not get a clear cut equation where you only get this unknown or this unknown. So that in the same way, when we are applying uh, principle of virtual work, the virtual displacement should be such, okay, they should be judiciously chosen that what we want to obtain and what we know should be the only quantities that do the virtual work and because of that in one shot can we get the unknown that we desire. Is the point clear? Okay, so let us move on and in free body diagram, okay, uh, in 2D equilibrium, we draw a free body diagram. In virtual work method, we draw what is called as active force diagram. Now what is active force diagram? That any constant we release, only the forces which will do the work are represented and then we provide a virtual displacement or a virtual rotation and a combination of them, okay. So what is that actual uh, active force diagram? We'll come to, come to that in a few moments. But as of now, it is only a terminology. The process, by and large, is the principle of virtual work and how are we going to apply it? Is the, is the idea clear? Let us move on, okay? So when we provide virtual displacements, which are the forces that do not do work, okay? Just some examples. So reactions at a frictionless pin, okay? What are the internal reactions here? Due to rotation of a body around the pin, don't do work, okay? These are all the details. They will become clear when we solve the problem. Reaction at frictionless surfaces. For example, if I provide a virtual displacement along the plane, then a vertical reaction will not do work. Weight of the body with CG moving horizontally. If the CG has pro being provided a horizontal displacement, then the gravity acts downwards, okay? So that will not do a virtual work. And the sum of the work done by several forces may be zero, okay? For bodies connected by a frictionless pin, bodies connected by an inextensible core, internal forces holding together parts of a rigid body. These are some, there's a list, shopping list, We'll do a few problems and all these concepts will automatically become clear when we'll do those problems. Now, the most important thing, okay, if you remember when we started with 2D equilibrium, we had said that there are kinematic degrees of freedom and there are force degrees of freedom. What happened is that in 2D equilibrium, we are mainly interested in what are the force degrees of freedom. The kinematic degrees of freedom were used only for example that if you release a constraint, how many forces? you will replace those constraints by. That was the only thing we were using the kinematic constraints for. But now, in principle of virtual work, what becomes extremely important is upon releasing a constraint, upon providing a virtual displacement, how is the body going to move, okay? So that becomes extremely important. Uh, say, what we will look in, in this uh, course, uh, in this lecture, is only one degree of freedom, the one degree of freedom systems. So look at this system. How many degrees of freedom do you think it has? One. Why? Because if we provide, uh, because if I know the coordinate of this point, all the coordinates or all the conformation of this body is automatically fixed. Similarly here, 
if I know this rotation, if I know this angle, then I immediately know what is the resulting configuration of this body. Similarly, if I know this theta, you can immediately find out what is this configuration. But in two degree of freedom systems, if this is theta 1, this is theta 2, okay, you cannot change theta 1 and expect theta 2 to appropriately change. These two are independent quantities. Similarly, here, there is theta 1 and theta 2, both of them are independent and we need two variables in order to specify the complete configuration. Okay? So, to summarize, principle of virtual work, okay, all this will become clear when we will solve simple problems. So, principle of virtual work, what does it tell you? The virtual work done by, an external, by external forces on an ideal mechanical system, what do you mean by ideal? Is there are no friction forces. Not that we cannot solve problems with friction, but if friction is involved, problems of virtual work becomes very messy. We are not going to deal with that complication. What we are going to do is that, that for ideal systems which don't have friction or which have negligible friction, then the principle of virtual work states that virtual work done by external active forces on an ideal mechanical system in equilibrium is zero for all virtual displacements consistent with the constraints. Now, what is this consistent with the constraints will again become clear when we solve a few problems. Okay? As we discussed just a few moments ago, ideal system is a system such that all surfaces joints are frictionless. Okay? And consistent with constraints, what does that mean that a virtual displacement should be such that they should not allow the non-active forces to do any work. Okay? Let us see what all these things mean. Now coming back okay, from where we started, that why do we need principle of virtual? You would say that we discussed 2D equilibrium in great details, friction problems, 3D equilibrium, all things we did. Then why do we need to use principle of virtual work? First thing we will see is that there are certain class of problems, there are certain complex mechanisms for which if we do the same problem using equilibrium approach, it will require huge amount of effort and even after putting in huge amount of effort, you may not be sure that the answer you have obtained is right. Second thing is we can obtain the active unknown force in just one shot, a very, very complicated mechanism for which you may have to um, draw like say three, four free body diagrams by using principle of virtual work appropriately. Okay? We can find out what is that active unknown force in just one equation. And Last and the most important point is that, that such type of analysis, okay, when we add deformation component to this, will be, will be essential in solid mechanics, structural mechanics, and for example, in the future, when uh, uh, you may be teaching or students may be learning courses like the finite element method. Okay? So with this much of a preamble, okay, with this much tantalizing introduction, let us solve okay, some problems. But before I do that, let me describe a generic observation that if I take a rigid body, then what happens if I provide it a small rotation? Look at it. We have a rigid body AB, suppose. Now on this rigid body AB, we provide a small virtual rotation about point O of delta theta. So this is AB, a small rotation about delta theta such that this AB becomes AB prime. Okay? Now, can you tell me what will be the distance BB prime okay, when delta theta is very small? Just L, AB, AB times delta theta and since the length of AB is equal to L, this distance BB prime will be approximately equal to L delta theta. Right? Everybody agrees with me? L delta theta. There will be of course some tiny error. Okay, why? Because you are taking arc of a circle. Let me show it here. That if you have this rod here, this will trans transfers arc of a circle. So strictly speaking, there will be a tiny displacement also in this direction, but that will be much smaller compared to this displacement, which you say is of the first order. So this is L, this is delta theta, this becomes L delta theta and we neglect this tiny displacement perpendicular in that direction. Now can we also say that what is this angle A B B prime approximately? Can we say what is this angle A B B prime approximately? It has to be 90 degree y because sum of all these three angles is 180 but because delta theta is very small, okay, you will immediately become, uh, it will immediately become clear that this angle is approximately 90 degrees. Clear? So what do we know from here? is that, that if you take a rigid body AB and apply a virtual rotation or a small rotation about point A, 
then the resulting displacement BB prime is perpendicular to AB and the magnitude of the displacement is given by to the first order L times delta theta. Okay, so BB prime will be L times delta theta. Point clear? It's a very simple point but very important point we are going to use it again and again in the course. Fine? Now do, let us do one thing. This BB prime is at some angle. Okay, what is the angle? If this angle is theta, this angle also becomes theta, we all know. So BB prime is at an angle theta with respect to the vertical. Now what is the vertical component of this displacement BB prime? Just BB prime cos theta, okay, delta Y is equal to BB prime cos theta which is nothing but L cos theta delta theta. I can rewrite it like this. What is the component of BB prime or the virtual displacement in the horizontal direction? Nothing but BB prime sin theta. But what is BB prime? L delta theta. So this can be rewritten as L sin theta delta theta. Now note one thing, there is a very important interpretation of this. What is L sin theta? L sin theta is this vertical distance BP. What is L cos theta? Is this horizontal distance AP. So what is the vertical displacement? It is nothing but this distance AP okay, times delta theta. You understand that? You get that point? So we are just rewriting this L, L delta theta into sin theta as L sin theta into delta theta. But what we immediately know that displacement of point B, if you want to find out, what do we do? Just draw a line okay, perpendicular to the direction in which we want to find a displacement above. Because we want to find out displacement in the y direction, what you draw is, take, do is that, that through point B, draw a vertical line, okay? draw a perpendicular line from A to P, okay? this angle is 90 degree and this AP times delta theta will be the displacement of point B in the y direction. Similarly, if you want to find out what is the horizontal displacement of point B, what do we do? Draw a horizontal line okay? and from point A, drop a perpendicular to this, which whose length will be the same as BP and that distance into delta theta will be equal to the displacement in the horizontal direction. Now let me ask you one question. Suppose AB were not a rod, okay? suppose we had a triangle instead, ABP. Let us say that we don't have a simple rod like this, but we have a rigid triangle given by ABP. Now if I provide a virtual displacement or a small displacement of delta theta to this triangle, okay? if I provide a small virtual displacement to this triangle, what will be the vertical displacement at any point along this line BP? Is the question clear? Same, same, it will be equal to AP times delta theta. So it's a very important result. What we see is that, that if we have a rigid body, a full rigid body ABP, now to that full rigid body, if we give a small rotation delta theta, then what we know is that, that along this line BP, all the points have the same vertical displacement. Is the point clear, appreciated? Okay, and similarly, what you will also see is that, that for uh, the same thing can be done if for example you draw a triangle like this. Let me draw it here. Okay. If I draw a triangle like this, this is perpendicular A, B, B, 1. Now if about point O, we give this entire assembly a virtual rotation of delta theta. What do you think can we say about the horizontal displacement along all these points? The horizontal displacement, I am asking horizontal displacement. What is the horizontal displacement of all the points along this line BB1? Same and it is equal to B1A delta theta. So this is a very important result. What it tells us is that, that as far as the horizontal displacement is concerned, okay, if you just draw this line, all the points, if you have a big body, okay, and I want to find out that I draw this line, horizontal line, and from point A, I draw a perpendicular to that horizontal line, then all the points, 
on this line will have the same displacement in the horizontal direction and it will be given by B1A, this distance multiplied by delta theta. It's a very simple result, but it's a very powerful result. You will see that if you want to visualize some mechanism, okay, then this will become extremely useful and important. And if you want to find out that along this vertical line, what is the displacement of any point in the vertical direction along this line, what we do, we drop a perpendicular from point O because we are rotating the body about point O. Let us call this point as B2. Then AB2 times delta theta will be the vertical displacement along all these points. Is this simple point clear? Okay. And now let me ask you a third question, something like this. You have a big rigid body. Let us take point A here. If we rotate this body about point A, and suppose I ask that there is a direction which is inclined. Okay, it's at some angle alpha. And we give this system a small rotation of delta theta, which means that the entire body gets a rotation of delta theta about point O. Then what can you say about the displacement in this direction on any of these points? It will simply be equal to draw a perpendicular line. Let me call this AB3. Then AB3 times delta theta will be the displacement in this direction for all the points. Okay? Is this simple point clear? Okay? Now, this will become very important when we solve a number of problems. You can always have a displacement, take components of that, and so on. But with this, it is immediately apparent that all these points along this line will have the same displacement in the inclined direction. It will be equal to from point O about which we are doing the rotation for the body, drop a perpendicular. The distance is of that line is AB3. Now, AB3 into delta theta, displacement of all the points in this direction. Okay? So, let us move on now. Now, with this idea, okay, these are some mechanisms which you can solve easily using virtual work. Let us come to this very simple problem, but very, very illuminating about how principle of virtual work is actually applied. Okay? We have a very simple problem. We have a rod, okay? or for example, many times you see that people, when they want to climb up something, there is a ladder which lean against one point and second point, and people climb up the ladder. So what we have here is that, there is an equivalent of that. We have an inclined rod which is leaning against the wall, frictionless wall. At this point, it is resting at this point. Weight is acting through the center. But in order to prop this rod up, because if you don't apply this horizontal force, if you remember the problem we did in 2D equilibrium, this rod will just slide out. So in order to prop this rod or keep it in this position, we apply a force P. And what we are asked okay, is for this problem, which we will call as a ladder problem, what will be the force P required to keep this rod in equilibrium? Simple question we ask. We can solve this problem in one shot using equilibrium approach. How can we do? We just draw two perpendicular line, draw the free body diagram, two reactions here meet at this point here. So take moment about this point, immediately get P. So you say, what is the big deal about virtual work? The big deal is that, that this is a stepping stone to solving some more complicated problems. Okay? Now how do we apply? principle of virtual work here. So before I go to the next slide and actually display the solution, can you tell me that for this problem, in order to up obtain load P without bothering about the reactions at the top and the bottom point, how do we apply principle of virtual work? What virtual displacement do you think will be appropriate? Can we apply? Ah, yes, somebody. Right or left? Suppose, suppose let me ask you one simple question. Okay? Let us draw it here. Okay, before I go to the solution, let us have some discussion. No, it doesn't depend. Okay, we will see that. Okay, but it's a valid concern that it may depend, but it does not. Suppose this is the ladder. Will it be good if I apply it a virtual displacement like this, a pure translation in the x direction? Is this a good virtual displacement to apply? No. Why? Because this reaction will do work in addition to this P doing work. So P is unknown, reaction is unknown, we don't gain anything. 
Okay, so this is no good. Suppose I apply it a virtual displacement like this. Here, take rotation about this point. Okay, so give a delta theta rotation about the bottom point. So this displacement will become how much? L delta theta. How much will be the horizontal displacement? We know this is L, this is theta. So remember what we had done earlier, the horizontal displacement will be nothing but this distance. L sin theta into delta theta will be the horizontal displacement here. Vertical displacement will be this, this horizontal distance. Huh? L delta theta cos theta or if you want to write it like this, L cos theta delta theta. Sorry, sorry, upwards. But what is the problem with, which, with this virtual displacement? That reaction on the, this point will also do what? Okay. So we are again, like we are back to square one. So both of these are not applicable. So is there any other virtual displacement which I can provide? Or yes, slide. So what we can do is that we can bring this up and now entire assembly we can slide it by how much distance? By a distance of L sin theta delta theta so that this gap is closed. Okay, so that's precisely what we do is if you look at this, uh, okay, if you look at the resultant uh, uh, diagram, if you just take rotation about point B and apply this entire body AB a virtual rotation uh, delta theta, what do we get? This gap opens up. How much is the distance? How much is the horizontal component of this gap? It will be nothing but L sin theta. L sin theta delta theta. Just note, how do we get L sin theta delta theta? Is what we had seen is that just this distance multiplied by delta theta. That is L sin theta delta theta. So we want to close the gap. What do we do? We give a complete translation in this configuration such that the ultimate virtual configuration is this line A prime B prime, which is such that point B has gone inwards. Look here, by how much amount delta x? because we are translating this entire assembly by delta x, how much has point A gone upward by delta y, right? Because whatever delta y was there, it was equal to L cos theta, which is this distance into delta theta. That distance is not going to change after this translation. Fine? Okay? So this is delta x, which is given by L sin theta delta theta. <coughs> delta y will be equal to L cos theta delta theta and we are just now, we have to apply principle of virtual work. Will the reaction at point A do any work with this virtual displacement? No. Because point A has gone to A prime which has, which has gone up vertically but reaction at A is horizontal so no work. Will the vertical reaction at point do any work after this virtual displacement? No. Why? Because point B has moved only horizontally to point B prime whereas the reaction at B is vertical. So no work done. So only work done now is by what? Is by the weight here because if this displacement is delta y, what is the virtual displacement of the center? Half of that, just delta y by 2. What is the virtual displacement here? Delta x. Okay. So p times delta x minus w times delta y by 2 should be equal to 0. But what we see from here, if you take the ratio of dx by dy, what do we get? dx by dy is nothing but L tan theta, LL cancels out, so it's nothing but tan theta. So if I rewrite this here, what we have is that dx, let me write on a fresh piece of paper, dx by dy is equal to tan theta principle of virtual work tells us that delta y is upwards. So the work done by gravity is minus w delta y by 2 plus p times delta x positive because both p and delta x are in the same direction. This should be equal to 0. But what do we know? That delta y and delta x are not independent. I can say that delta x is equal to delta y tan theta. So it will be delta y by 2 plus p delta y tan theta is equal to 0 and since delta y is some arbitrary number 
we can just cancel out delta y from both sides and we know that p will be equal to w by 2 and theta, okay? Which is the result which we had obtained for millions of times now. So is the principle clear now? Very simple way of applying principle of virtual work. The idea is this, that the virtual displacement is how? We know some basic moves. Basic moves are what? Rotation and translation. By applying a combination of those basic moves, the final virtual displacement should be such that the work done is only by the forces that we know, which is W, and the force that we desire, which is P. So according to this virtual displacement, the only active forces were W and P, and only though uh, they did virtual work, and their virtual displacement of the weight and P were related by this simple relation, and so you could immediately get an equation relating P and W. Is the idea clear? It's a very simple problem, but it's, it's very basic, but very important. Because many problems that will come across will be a combination of this and some other problems. Simple, fine? Yes, please. Sir. Rotation about A huh. of the rod would uh, not have done that work? The P would but, have... But, so but have rotation about A, okay, what things to do work? Okay, suppose if there were a torque, okay, if there were, uh, this body had a torque acting on it or a couple acting on it, then the work done will be M times delta theta, straight away. Okay, if there were a torque acting on it. But now, as of now, there is no torque acting. Only so, w. just this rotation is not going to do any work. Okay, so, but, but indirectly, moved. indirectly, how does the rotation lead to work? Is because of just this rotation, look at the point A. A is going upwards, A is also going sideways. At point A, there is a reaction in the horizontal direction. That multiplied by the horizontal displacement, dx, will do the work. But what we want is that we don't want that quantity at all. We are interested in P, which is acting here. So what we do? We know that we can have a combination of rotation and translation such that ultimately we ended up having the final configuration after, the, after providing the virtual work. What was it? A combination of rotation about B plus a pure translation. And at the end of that, this did not do work. The top one did not do work. Only work was, work was done by the horizontal force and the weight. And that's what we wanted. Any other question? Yes, please. Sir, my question is that uh, yeah. uh, for calculation of delta x, it, it was L sin theta d theta. Yes, delta x was L sin theta d theta. Yeah. Yes. Uh, means we can do this in this way also that x is equal to, uh, we can get the uh, formula for x, x is equal to L cos theta and then we can differentiate it. Yes, so, so this okay? is one approach. So what he's suggesting is that, okay, this is a valid approach, but what I will tell you is that that's a somewhat tricky approach. And I will use you some problems, okay? I will show you in some problems where this approach can be very dicey, okay? You can do that, but that's a very mechanical approach. For example, many textbooks use that approach. So let me do that once. So what he's suggesting is something like this, okay? It's a good point, but I will tell you that why that approach is dicey. There will be a few problems that will be discussed here where this approach can just give you garbage results if not used properly. And also it is a very mechanical approach. It doesn't give you proper insights. So let us do it that way also. Let us say this is x, this is y, this is point A, point B, L, theta. So we can say that y a or the coordinate, y coordinate of point A can be written as L sin theta. x coordinate of B is equal to L cos theta. What is delta y? If I just differentiate, use simple calculus, you will see that delta y a is equal to L cos theta delta theta and delta x b will be equal to minus L sin theta delta theta. Now tell me, if delta theta increases, then what are you note, uh, what are you seeing is that delta y a is increasing, is L cos theta times delta theta is what we saw. If delta theta increase, delta x b decreases, point b moves inwards, is also what we saw, it is L sin theta, delta theta. So this is a per perfectly valid approach, but what happens is that, that if you use this approach, if you want to get a physical understanding that when we give all these mechanisms, what is happening? First of all, you don't get that. 
Second of all, I will show you a couple of problems where this approach, okay, if not used properly, okay, can give you absolute disaster results. Whereas the approach we are discussing now, it will take some time to develop intuition for that. But once you develop an intuition to do systems or do problems that way, then that will be completely rock solid. Okay, so the learning curve for the approach that I am discussing is a bit steep as compared to this calculus driven approach, which is very mechanical and seemingly easy, but the dividends are much bigger. Okay, you take my word for, for, take my word for this for the time being and you will see that what I am saying is right when we solve a few more problems or for example, when you go back, you also solve a few problems, try to attempt a few systems, you will realize the power of doing things in this way as opposed to just writing the coordinates and differentiating in order to mechanically get the coordinates. But there are some cases where this is much better than the approach that I am discussing. But by and large, this is better for building intuition. Yeah. Uh, so I am asking a simple clarification yeah, uh, that we are applying the load W so that… Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Can you repeat the question again, please? Uh, the load is… Uh, w is vertically downwards. Yes. So the ladder will slip towards uh, left. What is towards the left? That end point B will move towards left. For to prevent that, we are applying force, right? No, no, no. See, see, see one thing. Virtual display. I want to emphasize this point again that the virtual displacements that we provide are not dependent on the force. The way we apply are such that those force should do the work that we want. But the work, but the forces themselves, they do not influence virtual displacement. They are completely in our control. But we would provide it in such a way that only the forces which we are interested in should do work. Okay, so your question is Normal that… Normal ladder problem that uh, it will slip downwards and it will move towards right, and the load is applied to the center. The point B, huh. and the bottommost point will move we'll towards to move right. Yes, yes. Then we will be applying force towards left. Yes, yes, yes. That, that's why we are applying force P in the towards left direction, that P. Yes, surely, 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 that's the point. Okay, sir. And, point. and also, uh, in the, at any point the load is applied, it will not make any difference in this virtual. We can, we can consider the load applied at any point. W. Any point, yes. Yeah. It need not be at the center, it can be at any point, and the load can even be horizontal. Okay, for example, it need not be weight. Okay, for example, that somebody is pushing against it in the horizontal direction. That is also fine, or somebody is pushing against it in this direction. Okay, Thank both you, are sir. also fine. Thank you, sir. Okay, but note one thing what principle of virtual work immediately tells you that if you do not apply this P, if you don't apply this P, then what does it tell you that the work done is only W times delta Y by 2 and that can never be 0. So whenever you encounter such a situation where the virtual work cannot be made to be equal to 0, that's an indication that you don't have a stable system, it's a mechanism. Okay? So that's another beauty of virtual work principle that you apply all virtual displacement right down the works and you see that that can never be made to be equal to 0 you know that you have a mechanism at hand and you better apply some constraint so that the system is in proper equilibrium. But the displacement must be consistent with the geometry, with the motion of the it, <coughs> So you are right. So in principle, you may ask me that, that I want to give the displacement such that uh, it is consistent with the geometry. As we said, consistent with the constraints. Right, okay. What does that mean? That no work done here by the vertical reaction, no work done at point A in the horizontal reaction. That is the way we give the displacement. You may ask me, it is a virtual displacement, everything is in my control, why do not I give it some arbitrary displacement? Okay, I take it, rotate it, okay, x, y. Arbitrary. Suppose if, if I give the horizontal displacement to point P, huh. the point, where, where point A obviously will move upwards. Yes, yes. That is what, what I am saying. Yes. There so, will be an, as you have taken that uh, the angular displacement. But if point A move upwards, okay, going upwards is not a problem for us. Point A going sideways is a problem for us because reaction at point A is in the horizontal direction. Okay, mm -hmm. but if point A moves upwards, that does not do any work. So, A going to A prime in the vertical direction here is good, not an issue. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Right, but if A goes sideways as it is here, that is a problem. That is a problem. It is not really, it is not really a philosophical problem, it is a, it's a practical problem. Right, right. Philosophically, there is nothing wrong with doing that, but only thing that you get some answer which you have no use for. You can as well even break the rod and give that as a virtual displacement. Then what will happen? Internal forces will do virtual work. You don't want that. Okay, so virtual displacement is completely in our control. We give it judiciously in such a way that what we desire is are the only components and what we know are the only components that do work. Is this point clear to everyone? Can we move on? Okay, is this too slow, too fast or do I move a bit faster? How is it? Too slow? Okay, good.